Ladies and gentlemen, I told you that we would be doing some SCPs, and uh, I'm going to be keeping that promise. I have been enjoying my journey down through the SCP rabbit hole. So far, I've learned about uh, a lot of them. I've learned about the, the freaking immortal reptile. I've learned about the freaking uh, goddamn plague doctor, the infinite Ikea, where the dragons went. So today, we are going to be doing the Shy Guide. This was one of the most requested ones in the comment sections of my videos, so we will be doing the Shy Guy. I was told that this one will horrify me. When an anomaly is first detected by an SCP Foundation field- That deer be thick, though. Agent. It's up to the Foundation's mobile task forces to tag and bag the impossible entities right. before right. they can do any more harm. Sometimes these retrievals are uneventful. Other times, not so much. Yikes. All right. All right. Listen, you got to take care of them. You got to take care of these SCPs. Especially when they're dealing with brutal forces of nature, like SCP-096. Wait, so this Shy Guy is actually dangerous? It's called the Shy Guy. Ain't no way this is going to be dangerous. Also known as the Shy Guy, a creature that, from the very first interaction with the Foundation, had a reputation for being dangerous and needed to be feared. A series of vague sightings and mysterious disappearances up in the frosty mountains of the Yukon first sparked the Foundation's Please, interest. in Yukon? There's nothing dangerous in Yukon. It's always the quiet ones. Bro, it's always the quiet ones. When they were certain that they had an anomaly on their hands, two retrieval teams, Zulu 9A and Zulu 9B, were dispatched to secure and contain the entity. Zulu 9A took the lead in a heavy-duty chopper, equipped with 50 caliber GAU-19 heavy machine guns, Bro, and carrying an AT-4- one shy guy, that freaking helicopters, come on, brother. Come on, brother. You can suck on these nuts, yeah, yeah! Or anti-tank launcher, they were prepared for anything. Or so they thought, oh God. as they established There's a no visual way, on SCP-096 while two clicks away from the target. This little guy? Please! But this little dude is gonna be freaking dangerous? Come on, brother! Couldn't get a clear line of sight on the creature, but it appeared to be stationary, docile, and was making no attempt to flee. Oh, Piece yeah. of cake, right? Okay. Little did they know that SCP-096 was just looking away from them. What? If it was facing towards them, it'd be a whole different horror story, what? as Zulu 9A were about to find out. The team landed their helicopter what? next to the creature and were shocked to see that it was completely naked in spite of the sub-zero temperatures all around them. Well, that's why it's shy, maybe, because his balls are dragging on the snow. I don't know, brother. The creature was unnaturally thin, as though it had been starved for weeks, with bone-white skin and unnaturally long limbs. The team guessed that the creature's arms must have been at least 1.5 meters long, but right. its docile nature and insubstantial long, body mass guy. gave the impression that it wouldn't prove too difficult to contain. That is, until they saw its face. Zulu 9A's captain was the lone survivor of the incident, what? as he was lucky enough to be looking away when the creature turned towards his team. What does it do when you look at its face? I have to know! The rest of the squad ended up staring eye to eye with SCP-096, and from that moment on, it wasn't docile anymore. The creature began to whimper, then cry, <laughs> then sob uncontrollably in a what? way that sounded eerily human. This sudden change. Wait, so when you see its face, it gets shy and it starts crying? Okay, it's a kill. So. Ancient temperament startled the rest of Zulu 9A. What? They shot at it because it started crying? Bro, what is this, America? And they opened fire on the creature. Under the hail of gunfire, SCP 096 entered a murderous frenzy. Bro, opened its vagina mouth and fucking annihilated them. And began tearing into the hapless squad of soldiers. While its flesh and organs did seem to take damage, as a result of the barrage of 50 caliber rounds from the helicopter mounted machine guns, its skeletal structure remained intact and it continued its onslaught. Okay, I feel like that's not so bad. So it's just, it's dangerous and they're shooting at it. Like it's, come on, it's just like a lanky Bigfoot, shy Bigfoot. And that, that doesn't seem dangerous at all. Why are people telling me Shy Guy is one of the scariest of them? It's just doing its thing, and if you annoy it, it'll it'll fight you like like any bear would. I don't know. Tearing the team limb from limb, even after they'd blown practically all the flesh from the creature. The AT-4 anti-tank launcher proved equally ineffective at stopping SCP-096 while it was in attack mode. 
and it was only after slaughtering the entire team that it returned to its docile state. It's actually Nobody kind of scary. The fact that it just, it does that. It wipes them out, and then it just sits down and starts whimpering all over again. There, there is something eerie about that. Nobody knows exactly what the creature did to Zulu 9A after the gunfire started, but no trace of the team was left behind. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hold on. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it... Yes, so they, they pissed it off, and then it killed them, but they were gone? What does it mean, they were gone? No evidence of them remained? What does that mean? So I, it didn't just tear them limb from limb. It, what, it consumed them? It pulled a Kirby and just fucking went down on them like my imaginary girlfriend goes down on my meat? Zulu 9B touched down soon after, and with a grave warning from the captain not to look at the creature's face, they were finally able to subdue it. A bag was placed over SCP-096's face. Right, so as long as you don't look at it, you're fine. And you could just put it away, and it's fine. All seemed right. to soothe it enough to this move it- This seems like such a easy SCP to deal with. ...to a nearby Foundation facility. Little did they know, they just obtained one of the deadliest SCPs of all time. What? what Come on, bro! Ain't no way this is one of the deadliest SCPs. You just keep a bag on its face and it's completely useless. While it may have been under lock and key for now, it seemed inevitable that it would get out and cause more violence and chaos. Research and containment- Why? It was just sitting in its own place in the forest anyway. Easy, easy. Listen, I'm just saying that to build up my nerves here, okay? This ain't gonna traumatize me. The procedures for the SCP-096 were put under the command of Dr. Dan, a senior researcher at the site. It was his job to find out exactly what this being was capable of. And the more he tested, the more he realized that they were dealing with something- Dude, they were just sending people in there to get eaten? Truly terrifying. Disposable D-Class personnel were used to figure out exactly what it was that caused the creature to enter its attack mode. Just as it had during the initial retrieval mission, SCP-096 went berserk when any of the attending personnel saw its face. In this stage, oh, it, it would enter its vagina mouth and annihilated them. For a period of considerable and unstoppable distress for one to two minutes, covering its face and wailing loudly. When the period Just of distress ended, guy. the creature would mercilessly slaughter every D class that had seen its face. And just like with D class. Ha! They're just D-class! They're not real people! Zulu 9A. No trace of their bodies would be left behind. Dr. Den was horrified and intrigued by this phenomenon. The creature killed anyone that saw its face directly, but could the same be said for indirect depictions of the creature's face? Huh? Such as images Wait, and so video. They never, so they don't even know what his face looks like? They can't even see it on images? Why not? Dr. Dan was desperate to find out. More D-class personnel were brought in to frightening results. Dr. Dan found that the creature did well, indeed I, for one, have to say that I do not like this diversity casting. I don't see any test death this. row women right now. So, I'm just saying, not very inclusive of you, SCP explained. To frightening results. Dr. Dan found that the creature did indeed still enter attack mode when people saw pictures and videos of SCP-096's face. Wait, how does it know? If you see a picture of it somewhere else, it goes into attack mode? It just knows, it feels embarrassment. The creature seemed to have an innate sense of when people were viewing these representations, even when it should have had no conceivable way of knowing. That's insane. Okay, that's scary. <laughs> oh, that's, that's kind of scary. But still, it's... Okay, so it goes into rage mode in its own prison cell. Okay. Didn't matter how far away or how many barriers were in place between the viewer and the creature, <laughs> the attack mode would still activate. And once it did, it seemed as though nothing could stop the creature from hunting down the one who saw its face. Wait, wait, so if someone will see its face somewhere else, it'll break out of this prison to chase them down and kill them? With all of this new data, special okay, containment- so how does it break out? Like, what powers does it actually have? Why wouldn't just, you know, having it in a prison cell just, you know, confine it? Why isn't that enough? Procedures were devised to keep the creature safely under lock and key. Its cell was a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube fitted with advanced pressure sensors and laser right. detectors to ensure that SCP-096 remained in its cell without risking anyone having visual contact with the creature's face. There we go! Problem solved! Issue over! All cameras and video equipment were strictly forbidden, and weekly checks well, were- yeah, because if you look at it, it breaks out of prison to kill you, so... Any cracks or holes in the containment cell were mandatory. 
Of course, none of this would stop the creature if anyone somehow saw its face. Wait, so if you still saw its face, even after all of that, it'll break out of this, like, unbreakable jail? It just gains this incredible power? There has to be limits to its power, right? In order to solve that- Right, I saw them, uh, they tried to put this up against the, you know, indestructible reptile, and it wasn't able to destroy the indestructible reptile. A little problem. I guess that's just like an unstoppable force against an immovable object that doesn't really prove anything. Dr. Dan would need to continue his research. To find a method of subverting the creature's deadly glance, they needed to know exactly what they were dealing with. But how could they, when even a glance at a photo or video of the being yeah. meant certain death? A certain death, so there's no way to actually stop it. That's wild. It is unstoppable. It is one of their unstoppable SCPs. Containing it is really just not about containing it physically, it's about placating it in a way that no one actually sees its face. A potential solution was proposed, creating an artistic oh. representation of the creature's face, okay. something that hadn't yet been attempted. But how would they achieve such a yeah, thing? Simple. Dude! They get a death row artist! Oh my god! They'd procure a D-class prisoner with some artistic talent. And they found one who had been a tattoo artist before becoming a foundation- Let's go! The diversity hire! Let's go! Guinea pig. Women could be death row prisoners too, guys. And if you don't think so, well then I take- I advise you to take a good look at yourself and say that maybe you're the problem. Dr. Dan formulated an ingenious plan for keeping this D-Class alive for long enough to accurately draw an image of SCP-09- Holy shit, these people are evil. Fix's face. He would be placed in a bathysphere diving bell several kilometers underwater and tens of kilometers away from the containment cell where the SCP was being held. The D-Class was made to look at a photograph of the creature's face and then replicate that image in a pencil sketch. And I'm sure they didn't tell this artist that, uh, you know, dude's gonna show up to your doorstep. Dr. Dan first confirmed that the creature's attack mode mm. is only activated by the creature's face by having the D-Class look at a series of photos of the SCP's body parts, one by one, okay, finally so it's only finishing its with its face. The D-Class began drawing and even remarked on how creepy the SCP's facial features were, despite not knowing the deadly context. Meanwhile, <laughs> so back it was creepy looking. Already. In its containment cell, <laughs> SCP-096 sensed someone viewing its face and entered its inconsolable crying state followed by its attack mode. So, it's crazy that it actually could just break out of all this shit. It broke out of containment easily and began making a beeline for the D-Class. So there is no- none of the technology that the SCP Foundation actually has could stop this guy if it wants to break out. Traversing the miles between it and its prey, the D-Class didn't know it as he locked the finished drawing into a separate, autonomous submersible, but he was already dead. As the drawing made its way he up- He was already dead? Bro! I thought it was a diversity artist! My god! Dude, kill some women, please! Can you have some respect for women and kill some of them too? God damn it! To a researcher on the surface, SCP-096 dived into the water and started swimming down towards the artist. Minutes later, the bathysphere was breached and the D-Class was torn to shreds. SCP-096 was recaptured without issue by surface recovery team hey, Fox- you just, you just don't need to look at it. You just shoot a net at it. Xtrot 303A. And further testing on the drawing showed that artistic representations of SCP-096's face were in fact harmless. From this experience- Alright, so you know how it looks. That's a- that's something, I guess. We now know that the creature has a gaunt face with totally white eyes, possibly indicating blindness and a grossly extended jaw. Nevertheless, Dr. Dan was adamant that SCP-096 was too dangerous to be left alive and requested permission from the upper echelons of the Foundation to terminate the creature by any uh -huh. means necessary. Okay, so they figured it out and they'll annihilate it. All right, all right. Th this thing isn't like the reptile, right? It's not indestructible. It's just dangerous if you see its face. However, the doctor's request would fall on deaf ears until it all started with a seemingly innocent image. While it's now been redacted for your safety, the black speck inside the yellow circle was once a minuscule image of SCP-096, taken unknowingly in the 1990s by a What?! Bro! Okay, now I'm starting to recognize why this is actually as horrifying as it is. Semi-professional mountaineer. Okay, that, that's One horrifying. Day that's actually scarring. This thing could be in any photograph taken randomly in some background, and that photograph circles online, and this SCP will go on an unstoppable rampage, killing people. 
Okay, that's horrifying. I, I take it all back. We're looking at old photographs when his eyes passed over the tiny speck without even noticing that he had seen anything. But SCP-096 noticed and began entering its attack mode. It tore through its steel containment unit like tissue paper, Bro. causing the release of a nerve agent that killed a number of attending Foundation staff. The monster then fled the base and began pursuing its prey, with Mobile Task Force Tau- There's nothing they could do about it. They can't stop it. One in hot pursuit. That's horrifying. That is actually horrifying. This is like a... And you know what's gonna happen. The second that people hear about this, everyone's gonna ask, but what was that picture? And then they see that picture. That's actually a world-ending SCP. Holy crap! Dr. Alexi, who was helping to manage the site where the SCP was contained, was in dismay over the situation. Dr. Dan was out of the country at the time, trying to discover more about the creature's origins. However, he did leave the Mobile Task Force with a new secret weapon against the rampaging okay. Shy Guy. Project Scramble. Scramble were state-of-the-art goggles featuring a new technology created by Dr. Dan, which, using artistic renditions of 096's facial features, could detect and scramble the features of SCP-096 into an- Yo! That is so smart! That is huge brain! That is colossal brain! So you can wear these goggles, you can actually look at it, and you wouldn't technically see it. And it wouldn't get shy because you didn't technically see it itself. Damn, science W! Dude, I love how the- my, one of my favorite things about the SCP isn't just the creativity of these monsters, but also not only just making them absolutely horrifying, but, uh, like the solutions that people try to come up with. It's- it's so almost lifelike in the level of detail they put into it. Unrecognizable form, preventing the normally deadly effect of gazing upon its face. In theory, this would allow- IN THEORY?! Oh, no! EF-TAL-1 to engage safely with 096 once its prey had been eliminated and bring it back into containment. But does that- So they, they don't even try to save this guy. They do not even try to save this person that it's running after. They'll just, well, we'll just follow the SCP, he'll kill whoever looked in, and we'll take it back home. Monster struck on two fronts. First, the prey in question was located in a population center, creating the potential for a huge loss of life. And the second bigger problem was that the scramble technology didn't work. What? It didn't work. That was just a theory. A containment theory. Stray pixels of the creature's face would reach the eyes of the task force before the internal microprocessor had time to scramble them. The mission turned into a death sentence as SCP-096 slaughtered almost the entire task force. Brother. Can't scramble it faster than light. You just see it for, for a split second and it'll come for you. As well as a number of civilians in town, including an infant and its entire family. What, why do we need that random detail? Just that random detail to show you, yep, collateral damage is a bitch. It was a monumental disaster, made even worse by a final revelation. Dr. Dan and Dr. Alexi had- That's actually really horrifying. SCP containment, like you, they really can't contain this. This is literally uncontainable. The best you could do is hope that the world forgets about it and never sees it because there's no possible way the foundation can actually fucking deal with it. That's actually horrifying. Had themselves facilitated the entire containment breach and allowed the resulting massacre to happen. With Dr. Dan hoping it would be enough motivation for Foundation Command to greenlight his research into destroying the creature. He wanted that to happen as an excuse to destroy it. What a fucking pragmatic utilitarian mother shitter. Anything that would give him the opportunity to kill this thing would be worth the bloodshed. His plan worked, and the SCP Foundation saw it his way, approving his request- There's nothing they could do about it. It cannot be contained. ...to neutralize SCP-096. Dr. Dan is a psycho. However, success comes at a cost for Dr. Dan. Once he figures out a way to finally kill the creature, though done in his line of duty, he himself will be terminated by the Foundation for his crimes against humanity. Damn! Foundation be ruthless! Okay, so the Foundation, they're not good guys. They're not bad guys either. They just kind of do their thing. Wait, so Dr. Dan, they're like, Alright, Dr. Dan, you've made a very good point. So we are going to be uh, following your advice and killing this thing because it's too dangerous. But in order to convince us to do that, you caused people to die. So uh, we're going to kill you too. But considering Foundation would strip his protection and make him D-class. That's how it works. Dude! How much damage SCP-096 is capable of causing if it ever got to a major population center, or even worse, was ever- People see it. <gasps> oh my god, imagine broadcasting it!
caught on camera and broadcast to a worldwide audience, the doctor himself would likely deem his own death a justifiable cause. To this day, the foundation- Oh my god, dude. Can you imagine just taking a picture of it, putting it on the news, and then this thing is just on a warpath, an unstoppable warpath, just wiping out civilization? The is researching ways to kill the creature, and they're still looking for their silver bullet. And the pressure is on. They hadn't known about the seemingly innocent picture that sparked the last containment breach, the one taken <sighs> decades ago, in which the shy guy had only occupied four <sighs> tiny pixels. Four Four pixels. Four tiny pixels that resulted in multiple innocent lives lost. So be careful where you look, because who knows how many other photos of the creature are lurking mm. out there. Photos with an innocent dot in the background. Your mm. eyes glance over it, not even noticing the little blip, until you hear a distant wailing that seems to be getting closer Dude, and closer that is a horrifying and closer. Monster. And then, it's already too late. Bro! That's insane. That's scary as shit. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.